Hey, this is Laura Arndt, and this lesson is about solving multi-step inequalities. They are very similar to regular equations, except for one little twist, and I'll talk about that in a minute. The goal is to get the variable, x, y, or whatever, by itself, or to isolate the variable. So, the first one is really quite simple and straightforward. Let's look at it. If we start with 3x plus 6 is greater than 24, our first step would be in getting x by itself is to get rid of this 6. So we will subtract 6 from both sides. If we do that, then we have just a 3x over here, and on the other side we have 24 minus 6, which is 18. Now we have to divide by 3 on both sides because 3 is being multiplied, and we do the opposite. So we divide by 3, and we end up with x. 18 divided by 3 is 6, so x is greater than 6. That means that any number greater than 6 will solve this inequality. Now let's look at the next problem. This is the one that has the little twist that I was telling you about. So when we try to solve this, again we want this x by itself. So we will subtract 6 on both sides, just like we did before. And in this case then, we are left with negative 3x is greater than, again, 24 minus 6 is 18. Now it's a little tricky though. We have to divide by a negative 3. So in this case, when we divide by negative 3, we end up with, you will notice, x is less than negative 6. What? How does that make sense? Why is it the other way? Well, I'm glad you noticed, and let's take a look and see what happens. Any time you multiply or divide by a negative number when working with inequalities, you have to switch the inequality sign in order to make it true. So if we look at this problem again, we end up with x is greater than negative 6 if we don't flip it. So let's pick a number. We can plug it in right where the x goes. How about 0? It's right here. And where the x is, we put the 0 in. So 6 minus 0, 3 times 0 is 0. 6 minus 0 is 6. And 6 is greater than 24. Uh -uh. Not true. 6 is not greater than 24. Let's pick another one. How about a negative 2? We put the negative 2 in. We end up with 6 plus 6, because negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6. And we end up with 12 is greater than 24. Uh, again, that one is not correct. So what if we try negative 6? Let's see what happens when we do that. Well, we have negative 3 times negative 6, which is positive 18. 6 plus 18 is 24. Is 24 greater than 24? Uh, again, it's not true. So none of the numbers that are greater than negative 6 or are negative 6 are going to work. That means it has to be a number that's less than negative 6. So anytime we have to divide or multiply by a negative number, we have to switch the inequality to go in the other direction. Let's move on. Sometimes when we're solving multi-step equations or inequalities, we have to use the distributive property. This will happen as we get better and better at algebra. You'll see it more and more often. So one of the things, some of the common mistakes are that people make are, one, that you forget to distribute to every term inside the parentheses. That means this 2 has to be multiplied by the 6. And the, the negative 3, everything inside. And two is to be careful of your signs, because this isn't 2 times 3, it's 2 times negative 3. So you want to make sure that you watch that. I've seen that happen often, that people forget that when there's a minus sign here, that it's actually attached to that 3, that term after it. So let's give this one a try. The first thing we have to do is our distributive. So 2 times 6 is 12. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6x, so we have 12 
minus 6x is less than or equal to 24. Now it looks just like the ones we had before. We need to get the x by itself. So we're going to subtract 12 from both sides. 24 minus 12 is 12. So we end up with negative 6x is less than or equal to 12. We're going to divide by negative 6 on both sides. And we end up with x is greater than or equal to negative 2. Don't forget, if we divide by negative 6, we have to flip our inequality sign. So this is our final answer. x is greater than or equal to negative 2. All right, even more complicated. Don't forget to distribute first and then combine on each side of the inequality before you start isolating the variable to one side or the other. If you want to pause the video now and give it a try on your own before I give the solution, do that now. Okay, let's see how this goes. We're going to distribute first. So this is going to be 2 times 4 and 2 times, let's not forget, what's in front of this x is the invisible 1. We never want to forget that invisible 1 that is right in front of that x. So it's going to be 2 times negative 1. And what we get there is 4x plus 2 times 4 is 8 minus 2x is less than or equal to x minus 12. Now we will combine our like terms right here. We have a 4x, and right here we have a negative 2x. We want to recognize that those are on the same side of the inequality. So we want to combine those. So 4x minus 2x is just a 2x. 2x plus 8 on the one side, and still x minus 12 on the other side. Now we're going to move things around a little bit. We can subtract this x from both sides, and we end up over here with just an x. So we have x plus 8 is less than or equal to negative 12. And then we have to subtract 8 from both sides to get this x alone. So we subtract 8. Negative 12 minus 8 is negative 20. Do we have to flip our sign? No, nope, we didn't have to divide by any negatives or multiply by any negatives. So our answer is x is less than or equal to negative 20. Now, my friends, it's your turn. Don't forget everything we just talked about. When doing multiple choice math tests, it's always smart to do the problems first and then see if your answer is there. Pause the video to do these problems now. Okay, let's look at some answers. The answer for the first one is B, x is less than 3. And the answer for the second one is C, y is greater than or equal to negative 2. If you didn't get the right answer, the most effective way to learn is to figure out where you made your mistake. That's why I put all of the steps down here. Now, you don't always have to do them exactly this way. Sometimes people will move an x from to the left side, sometimes to the right side. Um, but you can follow along and check your math and see, did you do all of your arithmetic correct? Sometimes those signs can be a problem. Did you distribute everything properly? Did you distribute, did you distribute to everything within the parentheses, every term? Um, did you forget to switch your inequality symbol? These are all simple mistakes that can affect your final answer. There's one more for you to try, and it's a little bit more complicated. Here you go. Don't be concerned if you get a fraction for an answer. Hint, hint. Go ahead and pause the video now. Okay, here is the answer for the last one. Again, 
If you didn't get the right answer, the most effective way to figure it out where you're going wrong is to go step by step through the problem and see where you made your mistake. Is your arithmetic correct? Did you screw up with signs? Did you combine your like terms correctly? You'll notice we have two right here that could be combined right away into this 6x. Then we start moving things from side to side. So your final answer for this one should be a. x is greater than negative 6 over 7. I hope you have a better understanding of solving multi-step equations now, and I'll see you next time.